Hello all, and welcome in. We're so glad you've joined us for another edition of the Book Nerd Diaries. Life can be rough sometimes, so please pull up a chair here in the library and relax for a while as we dive deep into the latest books we've crossed off our endless to-read list. Please be warned that spoilers lie ahead, and some content might not be suitable for all listeners, so please go check out the show notes for content warnings regarding today's book and discussion before moving ahead with the episode. Ready? Then let's get our book nerd on. I'd like to open today's episode with this little question. Do you believe in fate? That our lives are written when we're born, and that all of us have a path we're set to follow throughout our lives? You don't have to answer, of course, but I'm sure this is something that all of us have pondered at one point or another. If fate does exist, I can say this much. It certainly has a sense of humor. Sometimes, certain events that happen in our lives seem too coincidental to be mere chance. Like everything has lined up in just the right way for either the worst or best possible outcome to occur at just that moment. On the other hand, there are other moments that seem far too sudden to have ever been planned. Like, no matter how much time you spend thinking over your choices, there are just some outcomes you could never possibly plan for. We all want our lives to make sense, but most of the time, I'm afraid that it rarely ever does. The heroine of the amazing book we'll be covering today, The Magical Little Thieves by Margaret Owen, could argue that she knows more about the topic of fate than most. Fate is her constant companion throughout her life, and she depends on it in order to survive each day. It doesn't hurt either that the goddess of fortune herself happens to be one of her godmothers. Our story begins at a crossroads, both literally and figuratively. A woman has arrived there accompanied by a young girl, presumed to be her daughter, to meet with the goddesses of fortune and death. The woman claims that the child is cursed, and asks for fortune's blessings over her. Death answers that in repayment for such a boon, either the mother or her daughter will have to stay behind with the goddesses forever. After some thought, the mother lets go of her daughter's hand and simply walks away, never to see her child again. The daughter, now alone with her two new godmothers, introduces herself to them as Vanya. She follows them into the woods, and thus her new life is started. We next move forward to the scene of a young woman disguised as a noblewoman named Giselle, getting ready to join a lavish party. Many of the attendants have joined this gathering in order to be seen and flaunt their grand wealth, but this particular guest has a far different motive in mind. After quickly pretending to be sick from drinking, she excuses herself, then removes an enchanted strand of pearls around her neck to reveal that she is actually Vanya, the very girl from our earlier story. After cleverly stashing away her party gown and jewelry in favor of a maid uniform, Vanya sneaks into the master bedroom of the vast estate and grabs as much of the ornate jewelry she finds there as she can. She dearly loves her godmothers, but knows that they will never truly see her as family. As such, she has slowly been gathering the money to buy her freedom by robbing it from the elite right from under their noses. The downside of her illegal endeavors is that she has gained quite a criminal reputation for herself in recent years, along with a nickname, the Fenegeist, or the Penny Phantom. This name is a result of her practice of leaving a red penny wherever she strikes, though no other trace of her is ever left behind. As Vanya goes about her work, she is interrupted by the arrival of the very last person she needed to see right then, a messenger from Adelbrecht, the man whose fiancé she was just posing as. 
After changing back into Giselle's gown and likeness, she heads out to meet the messenger. The messenger, in turn, passes along some grave news. She will be marrying Adelbrecht in just two weeks, and a reward has been set for the Fenegeist's arrest. Not long after this grim announcement is made, which threatens everything Vanya had been working for, a delegation arrives from the godly courts to start the investigation. At the head of the delegation is a young man in an oversized jacket who introduces himself as Junior Prefect Emmerich Conrad. He announces that he will be taking statements in connection with the thefts, and Vanya promises to meet with him the next day before slipping away. On the road back to the palace where Giselle lives with Adelbrecht, the carriage is waylaid by a mysterious being whom Vanya instantly steps out to speak with. The being she meets with is discovered to be Icewald, the goddess of the forest they are currently passing through of the same name. Despite Vanya's attempts to negotiate with her, Icewald is furious at her for stealing from the citizens of her forest. For Vanya's crimes, Icewald punishes her by placing a curse upon her. By the next full moon, Icewald explains, she must return what she had stolen, or else permanently be turned into gemstone. Not only does this permanently put any chance of Vanya earning her freedom in jeopardy, but it could also mean her death if she does not soon find a way to meet Icewall's terms. We must step away from our story for just a moment, dear book nerds. But don't worry, we'll be right back after this very quick break. Don't go anywhere. Are you an author, fellow podcaster, or small business owner looking to spread the word about your product or service? Then let us help you. We offer a number of affordable monthly advertising packages in various price ranges, so if you'd like to hear your ad here in future episodes, please head on over to our page at ko slash bndpod and click on the shop tab to see what works best for you. Again, that's ko fi dot com slash bndpod then click on the shop tab we can't wait to work with you the book little thieves first came to my attention during my regular hunt on the libby app and i was instantly taken in by the incredibly fascinating premise as someone who deeply adores the world of le bardugo's six of crows little thieves hit almost exactly that same spot on my heart upon reading it like Six of Crows, this book focuses on a deeply cunning character who has perfected their skills of thievery and deception over years of survival on the mean streets. I really think Vanya, the anti-heroine of Little Thieves, would fit in beautifully with the scrappy and charming crows. Like the crows, Vanya possesses a definite disdain for those who use their wealth and power to keep others down and is more than happy to relieve the elite of their riches. She drifts from one wealthy target to the next like a ghost, relying on her own wits to get what she needs from them. After being abandoned by her birth mother, and treated as nothing more than a pawn of her divine godmothers, Vanya has learned to trust no one but herself to survive. Because she had been let down time and time again by parental figures, she has put up a proverbial wall between herself and the rest of the world, so that she cannot be hurt again. I have to admit, I adore how absolutely ruthless Vanya is in her work at the beginning. She knows how good she is at what she does, and has absolutely no qualms standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with literal goddesses, which is the kind of confidence I only wish I had. At the same time, it's equally rewarding to see her slowly learn to let people in as the story goes on and put others before herself. Not that she would ever admit such sentimental feelings to the people in question, of course. Another thing that is compelling about this story is how casually the characters interact with the divine. In a lot of fantasy stories and folklore, gods and goddesses are distant from their subjects only interfering with the mortal world when they absolutely have to. By contrast, 
The gods and goddesses of little thieves are a regular part of their people's lives, no different than the land they walk on or the air they breathe. How deeply aware would we be of our own mortality, after all, if you could literally talk to the goddess of death herself? In the end, this book is very magical, at times more than a little dark, and tons of fun. It's gritty, yet has just enough of the dreamy quality you find in your favorite fairy tales to make it a nostalgic read. If you're looking for a great caper, mixed with plenty of adventure and larger-than-life folklore elements, then this novel might just be for you. I will reiterate here, however, that some elements may not be suitable for everyone, so please feel free to check out the content warnings in our show notes before picking it up for yourself. It is here, dear book nerds, that we reach the end of our discussion for today. We absolutely love sharing our latest literary discoveries with you, and we're so grateful that you've joined us here in the library. Before we bid you a fond farewell for now, however, we would just like to take a moment to thank some very special folks. Firstly, thank you to Julie and Anthony for being our amazing subscribers over at patreon.com slash bndpod. It's your kind support that keeps the lights on here at the library, and we really couldn't do what we do without you. For your generosity, we truly do hope that fortune smiles on you. If you, too, would like to get perks like early ad-free episodes of this show, exclusive episodes, notes, scripts, our monthly newsletter, and a special role in our Discord server, we hope you'll join them. Our tiers start at just $2 a month, and every patron who joins directly helps us get closer to our dream of creating content for you full-time. Our deepest gratitude also goes out to anyone who has subscribed to our show via their favorite app, left us a review on Apple Podcasts, or told the people in their lives about us. These are the best absolutely free ways to support the show and help bring more people to the library. In the overly crowded world of podcasting, word of mouth is crucial, so every bit truly helps. Next week, Friday, November 18th, an all-new bonus episode is on the way for our dear $5 and up subscribers on Patreon, and we'll see you right back here in two weeks for another edition of the Book Nerd Diaries. See you then! The Book Nerd Diaries is written, edited, researched, and hosted by me, Amber Wilchin. Thank you so much to the wonderful Astrofreck from Pixabay for the use of our theme song, The Grand Entrance. Any other music and sound effects you may have heard during this episode are also provided by the amazing folks of Pixabay, so please check out the show notes for full credits. If you'd like to continue the conversation, Please follow us on Instagram or Twitter at BNDPod, on Facebook at Book Nerd Diaries, or via our website at bndpod.wordpress.com. If you have any comments, questions, or ideas for future episodes to send my way, please feel free to drop us an email anytime at bndpod at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, everyone. Please be good to yourselves, because the world needs you, and don't forget to support your local library. <laughs>